Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the FEP film on your VAT, as well as just some of the basic cleaning and maintenance I've been doing on my resin printer. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if you've been resin printing, hopefully you have these things already, but you're going to want to have some nitrile gloves before you even get started. You want to throw these on. Um, I've got a couple hundred of them. You're going to want napkins, which you also should have tons of from resin printing. You're going to want some isopropyl alcohol. I've got 99%. Uh, you could probably get away with something a little bit lesser, but that is just what I have. And of course, the FEP replacement film. Um, there's no specific brand that I really recommend. I can place a link in the description to the particular one that I bought off of Amazon uh, if you want to go with that one because that's been working out well for me. So again, before getting started, make sure you put your gloves on. Um, you don't want to get the resin on your hands. If you do get the resin on your hands and it starts to cure on your hands, it is going to be very painful. So let's avoid that and practice good safety. So Starting out, uh, again, I'm doing this on the AlphaWise W10. It should be really, really similar on the Anycubic Photon or really any other DLP printer uh, or, or resin printer that uses a similar kind of vat. So I take this time to not only swap out the FEP film, but also just do some basic cleaning. Um, so I recommend getting some napkins and just pouring some isopropyl alcohol onto your napkins and then going ahead and cleaning off as much as you can of the build plate. Um, I typically do my best to clean this off between each and every print at least a bit, uh, but I don't do a very detailed job. So this is kind of like my uh, perfect timing when I'm having everything kind of taken apart to actually do a little bit more uh, cleaning, a little deeper cleaning. So I clean around the whole base of the machine, make sure there's no resin kind of leaking down the sides or anything like that. Uh, I think it's just good practice. So that is what I recommend starting off doing. This process isn't difficult at all. It's actually very, very easy. It's just time consuming. It'll probably take you about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, just that's the way it is. So uh, once you've done your cleaning, then you're going to go ahead and remove the vat. So on this machine and on a lot of them, they've got just two screws, one on the left, one on the right, that are just thumb screws. So if you go ahead and unscrew those, you should be able to remove the vat completely. So I just go ahead and take the vat off, place it to the side. Then I do the same thing here. I get another uh, napkin with some isopropyl alcohol and rub down the screen area as well as the top of the machine there. Um, make sure that when you rubbing down this area, on my particular machine, there's like some insulation tape which covers the seams, which uh, basically keeps resin from easily being able to drip into the unit and destroying it. Um, when you're using isopropyl alcohol, excuse me, um, don't try your best to not get it underneath the adhesive because it'll cause it to peel back. So I kind of uh, make sure that I just lightly go around the edges of that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But again, you don't want the adhesive on that, that uh, kind of tape layer to peel off because then resin will be easy, uh, have an easier time dripping down into your machine, which is not good clearly. So you're going to need to grab an Allen key. Um, whichever size, hopefully your machine supplied one, but I've got a bunch of different Allen keys and you're going to need to take off all of the screws. I believe on this initial side, there is 10 of them. So typically the way I start off is that I loosen them all very lightly. Um, and then afterwards, once they've all been loosened a couple turns, I'll go back around and unscrew them all just to kind of evenly release the pressure. Um, uh, might not be needed, but it works for me. And so again, I just wanted to at least show you guys what's been working for me because when I went to first swap this out, um, this is like my third time now swapping this film out, I wasn't really sure how it was done and I watched some videos with kind of different information and not that either of them were particularly wrong, but I figured I'd share with you guys, you know, what has truthfully been working for me. So uh, this is the time consuming part is taking off all of these screws and uh, not losing them. So make sure that you keep them somewhere nice. And once that is done, you're going to go ahead and remove the vat portion from like the bottom FEP film portion. And this is where you've got to take off an additional uh, 12 screws, at least again on this machine. Photon, I believe, is going to be similar screw count. So um, on the initial vat that we took off, there are four screws that are longer than the rest. And so you need to keep track of those because those are the left and the right screws. While for this guy, they're all going to be just really, um, really shallow screws and they're all the same size. So there's no particular order uh, that really matters. So 
once you've gotten that taken apart, just go ahead and throw out the old FEP film. You won't be needing that anymore. Be careful not to drip any resin anywhere because there's typically some um, uncured resin that's kind of wedged around there. Then at this point, uh, again, I get some isopropyl alcohol and some napkins and I wipe down um, all of the aluminum parts that um, contain the uh, vat and the FEP film. One thing I will end up likely doing with these little screws is replacing them with some higher quality screws. I've noticed that they seem to like to strip very easily. So just be careful when you're loosening and tightening them to not over torque them. Um, you definitely want a good seal so that way the resin is not leaking through, but you don't want to um, torque them down so hard that you are causing uh, you know, the screw to actually strip. So uh, I likely will make another, maybe another video. But if not, I'm just letting you know right now that I'm going to be upgrading the screws to something like a hardened steel screw. Uh, so once that's done, then we're going to just basically do the reverse of what we just did. So place down your new FEP film, sandwich it between those two uh, thin aluminum pieces. And then using your Allen key, you're going to basically poke holes into where all the screws are going to be entered in that way you pierce through the FEP film and allow the screw to just go through easily. And again, I do the same kind of thing here where I fit all the screws in um, very uh, just kind of lightly. I don't clamp them down until the end. So I just get them to see like, okay, it's threading in a bit and then I kind of rinse and repeat. So poke hole, thread screw in a little bit, poke hole, thread screw in, rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Once they're all in loosely, then I'll go around and kind of clamp them down a bit more um, to make sure that they're all seated nice and securely. In a lot of videos, I saw people that were putting down some kind of like a cap underneath, which is supposed to help with tension on the film, but that is something I didn't seem to need. So once you've got that sandwich together, then you're going to go ahead and flip the bottom of the uh, aluminum around and just be, clamp it on top. So just like we took it off, you're again doing the reverse. Again, on this portion though, the only thing that's important is on the left and the right, the two screws that go on those sides are longer than the rest of the screws. And I recommend putting those four in first. That will help the whole vat clamp down together and for the shorter screws it'll make it much easier for them to actually slot into place and when you're doing this it's gonna there's gonna be quite a bit of pressure because this portion is actually kind of stretching the fep uh, film out so that way it's really tight which is what you want but be careful because the first time i did this it was in the middle of the night and the Allen key slipped out of my hand and pierced right through the brand new FEP film. And I doubt I'm the only person that's ever done that, but it's it was enough for me to swear a few times and throw the vat to the side and say, screw it, I'll do it tomorrow. So just take your time with this. Again, it's not a race and you don't have to swap this out very often. I think in the couple of months that I've had this machine now, I've maybe swapped it out twice and that's with heavy printing. And I probably swapped it out a bit uh, too often I, I might not even need to swap it as much as i did but uh, again one like for this video i didn't really think i needed to swap it out i just wanted to show you guys kind of the process because uh, i know that i've seen quite a few people that have been getting these machines and so inevitably you guys are going to be having to do this so i figured i'd hopefully show you guys the process of what goes into it to hopefully take away a little bit of the intimidation factor of it really so then I just take a box cutter and cut away the excess FEP film. This is not, uh, you know, an exact science. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of film sticking off the outside. It will not affect your prints at all. Um, normally, I do a much better job of this. I will tell you it is very difficult to try to put your arms around a tripod while manning a box cutter and not cutting your hand. So uh, again, normally I do a better job of this, but for the sake of the video, I think you get the idea. Just cut off the excess as much as you possibly can. Once that's done, I go ahead and clean up the FEP film. I used a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. You can probably use water. That'll work just fine. Um, it does typically cause the FEP film to fog up a bit, but I haven't noticed any issues with that as far as print quality goes. So for now, I'm going to say that that does not affect print quality if you do decide to use isopropyl alcohol um, like I did myself. 
And once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and place the vat back onto the printer, put the two thumb screws back in place, and you are ready to rock and roll. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out some other videos if you enjoyed the content. And if this was helpful and you want to support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon. And if nothing else, be sure to subscribe for more great videos. On that note, I am out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Peace, guys.